Hi folks, Lance from Runtime. Cheers. Can't be a nice cup of tea in the morning, eh boys? And girls, I hope there's lots of girls also in the engineering field now. Isn't engineering awesome? Hope you guys are having a great start to your week. Hope that you're engineering some amazing, amazing solutions to real world problems. You might be writing firmware, you might be doing electronic design, you might be doing QA tests, or you might be doing cloud connectivity and IoT devices, or even machine learning and computing at the edge. Whatever you're doing, or maybe you're doing a combination of all those different things, which would be awesome if you could do end to end, but whatever you're doing as engineers in the embedded field, kudos to you guys, keep it up. It's an amazing, amazing area to be in, particularly in today's world. Today, I wanna to talk a little bit about next computers. Byte Magazine, back in the day, this was a magazine from 1988 that you can see on screen. This was the magazine I used to read when I was a wee nipper. So this particular magazine is highlighting the Next Cube, which was Steve Jobs' next project after Apple. He left Apple to start Next Computers, and out of that initiative came the Next Cube and also the Next Step operating system. Amazing bit of tech for that time, 1988. Now remember, this was a time when Windows was just DOS with a graphical user interface on top of that, which was not a preemptive operating system, unlike this particular system, which was full Unix compliant. So today I'm gonna to explore a little bit about this next cube. So this magazine, I'm gonna flick through it quickly with you guys here on screen. You can see that the challenge with this machine at the time, and this is why it really wasn't commercially successful, was it was very expensive for the time. Now Unix on desktops wasn't a thing back in the day. You could only get Unix on mainframes and minis. So to put Unix on your desktop was pretty advanced, but it was $6,500 for a cube, plus all the peripheral devices. So it added up very, very quickly to 10,000 and more. And most people couldn't afford it. So it wasn't a commercial success. However, Next was bought by Apple. What Steve Jobs did, he pivoted his company away from hardware towards software, ported Next Step onto the Intel chipsets, and it became OpenStep. And that's what I'm gonna to demonstrate to you guys today and show you how advanced it was. But let's just quickly look at the hardware of Next Cube. And you can see these engineers did a great job in, in packaging the inside and the outside of the device. This is a block diagram of the circuitry inside the Next Cube. And for today's standards, everything that you see on, on the screen right now has been compressed into a single chip but back in the day it was discrete components so so now what you can see here is the actual circuitry I'll just zoom in a bit more now this is the actual PCB layout you can see look at how beautifully placed all the components are there's a lot of space between components now of course then today all this would be compressed into a very small PCB which is multi-layered, but unfortunately it was not a commercial success, mainly because the price point, people couldn't afford to have this amazing piece of kit on their desk. So the thing with technology is that nothing new in this world, it's just an iteration upon an iteration, more complexity, but those principles remain the same. So this is actually the next step operating system, fully Unix compliant, kind of like X Windows back in the day, X Windows was a big thing for GUIs for Unix systems. And this is kind of modeled on that. So there you go, a little bit of history for you. Now I'm gonna demonstrate OpenStep. To get into the demonstration, I just wanna tell you guys a little bit about the hardware requirements for OpenStep or Next Step back in the day. I've actually given this virtual machine 128 megabytes, which is way, way over what was required back in the day. You could run it on 16 megabytes, given it video RAM of nine megabytes and given it a hard drive of four gigabytes, which again was way, way too much. You could run this on half a gigabyte of disk space. So, so let's get into the demo now. So I'm actually running this on VirtualBox and I've actually got a VM set up. Now I'm not gonna go through all the setup required to install OpenStep because there's loads of videos out there. I will link some videos in this uh, video so that you guys can have a look and you can have a play. I highly recommend if you guys wanna have a bit of a play with this technology, it's really, really a lot of fun. So have a look, but let's get into the demo. So I'm gonna kick this off now. So we start it here and it's gonna boot up the VM. The first thing it does, let's remove that. It's gonna bring up this screen. So we're gonna go into there, we're gonna boot. So there you go, so it's booting up now and it's gonna go through all its normal initialization process. You can see this uh, next Mac operating system up here and it's now going through its initialization phase. It's uh, looking at the plug and play support, which is enabled in this case. And uh, it's looking for all the devices. It's checking them, testing them. And now it's gonna mount the system, the file system, and it's gonna go in and try to start up the, the network driver as well. We're now in next, I'll get rid of that. Now this little error just comes up anyway, so just ignore it, just say, it 
eject. Another one will come and just eject that. This is the user interface that you will see in Next Step or Open Step in this case. And you can see some of the characteristics which are still prevalent in Mac OS. You know, the dock, which you can move up and down. You've got the trash can down here. So these are the administration apps. You can configure the operating system with all the devices and so on. And so the way it works is that you can go to your screen here and you can set up your screen drivers, your mouse, your input device, your uh, network adapter. This. You've also got uh, SCSI as well. If you've got SCSI in those days, you just have SCSI drives. Now, what happens is every time you open an app, there's an accompanying control panel that goes with it. So you can do things within the app. So you can move around in the app. You can move into expert mode. You can install a driver. These are all the functions which are available in the app, but they've also pulled it out into this little pull down that you could access. And that's kind of how you do it. So if you want to get out of the app, you say quit and it gets you out of the app and gets you into the main area here. And then you've got all these uh, other types of apps. I'm going to demonstrate any of these really. Um, build disk. Uh, this is to do with networking and so on. I'm not going to go into any of that because this is a quick demo. You guys should go and install this and play around with it. But I will demonstrate some of the other functionality like the demos. Like give you an example of some of the demos. So let's just click into here. Let's go to Mandelblot. Click in here and it's going to open it up. Now, it's going to take a little while, it's done it, and now what we're going to do is we're going to run it. We're going to run it and then it's, look how quick it is. It's pretty quick and this is obviously running in a virtualization environment, but the machine is very, very powerful. It's full Unix, so let me just show you a Unix shell. We're going to get, we're going to get out of this, we're going to get out of that, and we're going to go down to the apps here again, and we're going to go to terminal. So we're going to go to a terminal. And there it is, it's bringing up the terminal. I've set it up for next step, called it next step. And we'll just pull it out a little bit here. And we'll just, what, what do we want to do? You want to do the old ls minus l. There you go, there's your directory. Let's go to root. But lots of other directories in here, as you can see. So you can go into the developer directory. I'm not going to go into any of this stuff. Let's go to the bin. Let's go, let's just do an ls on bin. There you got, you got the commands that you are normally used to using on Unix. You got orc, cat, change mod. The normal commands that people will use on Unix, they're available there, but not the comprehensive set of Unix commands that you normally see nowadays on. But there you go, that's Unix for you. That's the shell. It's a bit strange that I'm running this virtualization in VirtualBox, which is running on Mac OS, which is running OpenStep, which was the actual grandfather of Mac OS as we have it today. So it's pretty amazing technology. It's pretty fluid. See, it's pretty uh, fast on this kind of uh, installation. So let's see what other demos we've got. You've got chess. You've got some games here. You can bring those up. So we'll put, put that away over here. It might even have some billiards actually. Yep, it's got some billiards as well. So you can, you know, you can play games if you want to, uh, you know, if you're into chess. It's thinking, it's thinking. Or there we go. It's doing it. It's doing it. It's doing something. So we're going to move that piece there and you can see it's going to spin around and it's going to think about it now. And it's going to think Oh, there you go. And thinking, oh, there it is. So there you go. That's chess. And then billiards is kind of the same. You would move this up. And the, the length of the line as you draw it out will be the power that you are going to apply to that ball. So we just position it and whack. There it goes. So anyway, so that's, uh, that's a couple of games there. So we'll just get out of billiards and we're going to get out of chess. That's basically open steps. So I urge you guys to go and have a bit of a play with it. This is ancient technology, but it lives on in Mac OS. I hope this was educational and a bit of nostalgia for you guys. So what we do at Runtime, we place embedded engineers around the world, software engineers, electronic engineers, QAs, edge computing experts, even cloud experts, some of them with IoT. If you're one of those people and you're looking for work, maybe you want to reach out to us. We can maybe help you out. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.